on this episode of China Uncensored, Attack of the First Lady. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your American running dog, Chris Chappell. Ugh, I am so frustrated. Everyone knows I am so jealous of China's success that the only way I can cope is to make up lies and slander. I mean, with all the economic prosperity, personal freedoms, and liberation of serfs in Tibet, the Chinese Communist Party has proven how incredible socialism with Chinese characteristics is, and how fundamentally flawed Western democracy is. Oh, it makes me so mad! But. How can the American Empire and I fool the world when we're up against the brilliant mind and handsome good looks of people like professor at Peking University, Kong Ching Dong? Oh, I feel so intimidated by the manly, heroic spirit of even his picture. Oh, I wish I were his friend. Recently, we sent First Lady Michelle Obama to try and sow discord in China with irresponsible talk about internet freedom. But. Chinese people are so much smarter than us stupid Americans, who are also fat, not to mention lazy. Mr. Kong posted on his Sino Weibo microblog account about how a brave Chinese comrade forced Michelle Obama into a stuttering, dumbfounded silence. Well, let me just translate for you what Kong wrote. The female student asked, is America's strength the result of the U.S. Secret Services listening to the voices of its citizens? The young woman supposedly asked. Could you tell me in America what the difference is between listening to and listening in? Dumbfounded by the question, Michelle Obama eventually replied that she was not there to talk about politics. Urgh, foiled again! Kong's Weibo post was shared tens of thousands of times, and in unison, people all over China called him out on his lie. Apparently, people were able to figure out that at that heavily attended and reported on event, no one ever said that. Ooh, that's so awkward. Kong has found himself at the center of a firestorm of criticism from Chinese netizens, fellow educators, journalists, editorialists, well, everyone, basically. So, Kong Qingdong just made up a story to vent his anti-American sentiment. Is that a crime? Actually, it is. Uh, one hugely popular Weibo user, Ren Zhechiang, a big shot in China's real estate market with 19 million followers, pointed out that according to a new law, anyone found guilty of spreading rumors online that's reposted more than 500 times could be sentenced to three years in jail. That did not happen, but Kong did have a very reasonable, well thought out response to his critics. All of you are dogs of America and traitors to China. Gosh, harsh words for tens of thousands of his fellow countrymen calling him out for being a liar, just because he is. Actually, this must be his favorite catchphrase because this professor at one of China's top universities also has called Hong Kongers British running dogs. Well, Kong, when you're surrounded by dogs, don't be surprised when you get bit. For a perhaps Slightly more nuanced looked at Michelle Obama's visit to China. I'm joined by senior China Uncensored correspondent Shelly Zhang. Shelly? Chris? Well, the First Lady's trip to China was a disaster. Kind of like when your Uncle Lenny brings up the President's birth certificate at Thanksgiving and there's that awkward silence at the table. How did you know about my Uncle Lenny? Also, I didn't get the impression that it was that bad. Well, look, it's all about context. You see, before the First Lady left for Beijing, the White House emphasized that her trip would be a people-to-people -people exchange and that she would absolutely not talk about politics. Unlike Hillary Clinton or that radical Laura Bush, both of whom managed to offend the Communist Party during their visits to China as First Ladies. So the party leadership was expecting Michelle to come with her family, talk about education, feed some pandas. Maybe she and Peng Liyuan would knock back a couple of cosmos while talking about fashion, you know, girl stuff. And it started out okay. I mean, look at that adorable family photo. But then the first lady had to start poisoning the minds of the Chinese youth. So when she started talking about internet freedom at Peking University in the high school in Chengdu, well, sure, but not just that. Yes, she mentioned how the free flow of ideas over the Internet is important for discovering the truth and making your own judgments about stuff, and how Americans believe in the universal rights of equality and the freedom for people to say what they want and worship as they choose, which are in the Constitution. That is dangerous. What if the students start wondering what it says in China's Constitution? It was more than that. Michelle also used the most powerful weapon in her arsenal. 
herself. She told the students about her own personal story, growing up poor in Chicago, her parents sacrificing, working hard to go to college. Now, we talked about how Gary Locke is a walking American dream. So is Michelle Obama. And she even used her story to talk about the civil rights movement and how ordinary Americans decided that the laws were unfair, so they held peaceful protests and marches to change those laws. And then 50 years later, we have a black president and first lady. That's a pretty strong statement about America, but I still don't see how this makes her trip a disaster. It was pretty bad for the party leadership. Sure, the first lady didn't come out and denounce them politically. Although her speeches were censored in state-run media, they were mild enough not to get censored on Chinese social media. And Chinese people, Chris, can read between the lines here. They look at Michelle's story, The American Dream. Anyone can make it to the top if you work hard. And then they look at their own leaders. Anyone can make it to the top if you work hard, dedicate your life to the Communist Party, and either are corrupt or close your eyes to corruption on the way up. That's not exactly flattering to the party. Nope. And she also shows that America is a country that has made mistakes, but it's willing to admit them and fix them with the help of the people. Ultimately, soft power is about winning the hearts of ordinary people. And Michelle Obama's story, it's that kind of soft power that the party can't manufacture. That could be one reason that Kong Ching-dong got so upset he made up that conversation on Weibo. As one of the people behind the infamous Confucius Peace Prize, he should understand the symbols of soft power. Oh, right. The one they established instead of the Nobel Peace Prize and awarded to Putin. Hey, is it true that Kong is a direct descendant of Confucius? I don't know, Chris. Would a guy like Kong lie about something like that? Thanks, Shelley. And thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Be sure to check out the Facebook and Twitter page. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks to Shelley Zhang. See you next time.